But that's our original photo. And look at that. Life is beautiful. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today in this video, I'm going to do a super quick edit in Silver FX Pro 3 of Nick Collection by DxO. Those who knows me knows that I'm a big fan of uh, black and white uh, photography. It's just simple, minimal, less distraction by the color. And I made many, many travel videos based on Fuji Acros. So this is my next favorite. So today's video is not really going to be long and explanatory. Uh, it's uh, going to be more like me editing a photo while I'm going to explain on the go. So that at least um, take whatever you can out of this photo. It would be a sh um, nice and simple video. Um, I love this type of short video because at least when I watch some other artist work, at least I pick up some ideas and I try to use that on my own project. And most of the time it works. And most of them, even if it doesn't work, at least I do understand where he's coming from. And that helps me a lot. So I hope that it does the same to you. So this is the interface of Nick Collection uh, Silver FX Pro 3. Of course, if you want to change all kind of uh, settings, you have all these buttons on the top. And all you have to do is to either click or drag and drop your photo here, right? So what I can do, I'm going to go straight to my folder and then pick up some photos. So I've got some photos ready already here. I'm going to go to uh, my other filter where I have all the teeth saved and pick up one of the images. So I don't know which one to take. Uh, female artist. Uh, minimalist, I guess, you know what, I'm going to pick up uh, this one because I quite like it. It's a mix of uh, nature and a beauty uh, combination. I love this type of photography a lot. It's nothing, uh, you know, uh, sexy or anything about it. It's more a beauty. That's all matter. So I'm going to work on that image. I'm going to start from the scratch. So it's by default selected neutral, which is fantastic. Um, if you want to make it even more fast, of course, you have all the presets ready where you can select a bunch of uh, presets immediately. And that should give you the result that you are looking for. And they're fantastic. Honestly, I could just move on uh, by selecting one of the image because I'm pretty sure that um, the guys behind Silver FX Pro worked hard on those things uh, but i'm going to create my own so starting from the classic or uh, the modern sorry and then i'm going to take the one that super super neutral and then see what it gives me because it's a nature kind of there is a human involved so i want a little bit less contrast i'm going to go back Create neutral, close the window, and I have more space to work with. Now, on the left hand side, uh, you have, or the right hand side, my apologies, you have the histogram. So, in this nice slider coming from white to pure black, if you put your cursor, it will show you exactly where is your luminance side is, so which is pretty easy. So, you can quickly can figure out exactly um which part of the image represent what um something that you know a lot of artists work but i tend to avoid it pretty much 90 percent of the time because i'm here just for the good looking photos all this technicality doesn't really bother me so um you have the traditional sliders my personal favorite is the dynamic brightness so what is the dynamic brightness and the brightness so i'm going to click reset and then i'm going to add brightness let's say up to 50 so you know exactly what it's doing it's pushing the gamma it's not pushing the highlight it's pushing the middle part right there on the histogram right um but what if i go back from 50 to zero and then do exact same number on the dynamic brightness it's kind of pushing the brightness while making sure that your shadow area it remains exactly the same so you still have the contrast enough contrast while making everything bright pretty amazing isn't it 
So you know what? I'm going to leave it there because it looks quite nice, nice, punchy and contrasty. Maybe in the contrast adjustment, I'm going to add some soft contrast. So again, if you add contrast, you have the contrast obviously. Bright gets brighter, dark gets darker. If I go come back uh, to zero and add soft contrast, then you know it still have contrast, but it's pushing, it's making it darker, dark, but the brighter remains the same. I'm going to keep it the same. Um, structure adjustment. So you have a bunch of uh, this is to do the contrast and tone contrast. So you have a many tone contrast slider. As a matter of fact, they all work in the same way, huh? You just uh, you have to select one or three of them max at max. Uh, you don't need to really uh, play with all of it. It just doesn't make any sense. I'm thinking, should I use them or not? To be honest with you, I'm not really looking forward to uh, fiddle with them. Uh, I know that mid-tone and brightness pretty much the same thing. So you have a, in the brightness adjustment, you have a mid-tone. In the structure adjustment, you also have a mid-tone. So I don't understand sometimes what it does. Are they the same? So if I do 44 right there, come back to zero. Uh, there you go. And then if I do the same thing on 44 here, aha. Uh -huh. So the mid-tone structure and the normal structure, essentially, uh, mid-tone, in general, in the brightness, it works on the brightness, but the structure, Miton, it just work on the brightest part and make it even more contrasty. I like it actually. I don't know if I if if I made any sense um, when I just explained the midtone of the brightness and structure adjustment. Uh, take it what you can. It's a, just a grain of the salt because you know many people explain the same thing in many way. I have my way to explain. I hope you understood something out of it. Uh, tonality. Mm, Again, uh, nothing. Maybe I could add some shadow, work on the shadow. Let's see what it gives me. Nothing much. I made it to all the way to 100, but I did nothing. So, uh, And then you have the selective control point, which is something that um, I wouldn't bother, to be honest, even though it's probably one of the most coolest tool of Nick Collection, but um, not really something that interests me because I'm working on a global project. Color filter. Now that should be interesting. So if I do blue and then green, let's see what it does. No, no, not like it. Green is generally very good for a green foilage. That's something that doesn't interest me. And then you have the yellow filter. Let's click it. Uh, it does not do much. And then orange, maybe? No. And then the red. I'm guessing that it's going to be super contrasty, the red one. No, it's actually contrasty enough. So I think, you know what, I'm going to stick with red filter and then leave it there. I can even add some more uh, strength, which actually helps me a lot. Actually, you know what, I'm going to put the slider all the way to 200. Uh, now th this looks powerful. Especially on her um, right edges, the bright gets brighter, but very beautiful way. So this is making the subject standing out from the background. And that's exactly what I want. Beautiful. There's a one thing that kind of I'm looking at, which is the floor, the sand here. So I want actually the sand standing out as much as the subject as well so at this time probably i could use the selective adjustment so i'm going to add adjustment on this particular area make it as big as i possibly can maybe somewhere there and if i want to verify exactly where i am using it i could there you go this is exactly where i'm using it maybe it's going a little bit far that's fine as well i don't care where I, what I want the, it to be a little bit punchy, like contrasty. So I'm going to amplify white, but I'm also going to amplify black. But the, maybe the white can be a little bit lower. 
and basically I'm trying to make it as contrasty as possible. I'm going to do the same thing. What I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate it, do it same on her right hand side. So try to bring it down there and pretty much do the same thing. Amplify white, amplify black as much as I can. Add some structure so that it looks nice, crunchy. Uh, in the this side on the left, I'm going to add some more black. Let's see what it gives me. The same thing gonna be on the right hand side. Also add some more black and more structure. Reduce brightness a little bit. Same, I'm going to reduce brightness on her left hand side. Now it's start to look pretty, pretty, pretty powerful. I'm going to add another control point on her body. And then I'm going to add maybe a little bit brightness. Amplify a touch white amplify a little bit black and then reduce contrast uh, structure looks pretty beautiful isn't it now i'm closing it now time for a little bit um, creative work i'm going to reduce the sensitivity of the red channel so that her skin tone gets a little bit darker but the blue let's see what it gives me I'm going to reduce the blue channel. It doesn't do much. Cyan, ah, uh, cyan is working on the ocean water, which is fantastic. Same with the yellow. I'm going to reduce the yellow a little bit so that it reduces the brightness of the sand. We eventually gonna do a side by side. Okay, let's do it now. So I'm gonna do that. So that's our original photo. And look at that. Fantastic. I love this image already, how far it had come. So let's go back. Now finally the film grain. So I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm going to add a film grain, of course, because that's the one of the coolest part of silver effects. And maybe, you know, I'm a particularly big fan of Foma Pan 100, but I want a little bit more grain, like a really super punchy grain. So. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pick one of the Kodak one because Kodaks are known for something beautiful. So, uh, that, that, T-Max 3200, punchy and grainy. T-Max 100 maybe. Tri-X 400. You know what, I'm going to start with T-Max 3200. Done intensity a bit more maybe add some more grain and in the turning section i'm going to add a sepia tone because it will give me a, like a sense of sunset i believe and add a bit of strength now there you go it start to look super 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 awesome and in the paper hue i'm going to add a touch cyan maybe one to two should i add more grain i'm going to add even more grain now okay now this looks pretty freaking awesome and i'm not going to um add a vignette but i'm going to add some burned edges so let's see what it gives me I see vignette and burn edge to me not much different but the other one i like it better maybe a soft burn edges walu walu wala now let's export it let's see what it gives me now this is our photo how awesome is that beautiful phenomenal and fantastic my goodness i'm in love let me show you side by side right now I'm going to close the window and look at the, how far we have come. So, before, after, before, after. Wonderful, isn't it? Anyway, this is a little, you know, my favorite workflow slash tutorial on 
Nick Collection Silver FX Pro 3. I hope you like this video. If so, please do like and subscribe. And I see you in the future video. Give a kiss to everybody you love. Have a good sleep and see you soon. Bye bye.